Hello, welcome to Insight. I'm Wendy Brokaw. Salem Public Library is back in business, but with changes due to the increase in COVID-19 infections. The City of Salem postponed the public reopening of the renovated main library and the West Salem branch until further notice. You can find the latest information about the library reopening and answers to many of your questions at cityofsalem.net forward slash library. But what's inside the main library? What changed and why? For this and more, I talked to city librarian Sarah Strahl. Welcome to Insight, Sarah. <laughs> nice to have you on. Tell us, what's it been like for you all this time? <laughs> that is a really great question. It's been um, exhilarating in some respects. You know, we started this project as a safety and um, accessibility project, which is great in and of itself, right? I remember that well. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And then, you know, the foundation also helped us make it even more than that um, by funding um, projects that are so huge um, and just make such a difference to the entire look and feel of the space. What can people expect when they walk into the doors now? Uh, I think even before they walk in the doors, um, the front entryway is a completely different experience than it ever was before. Um, and, uh, and then as soon as you walk in, uh, it's going to feel bright, airy, light. Um, you're going to notice so much more light. There's new windows that were never there before. Um, you're going to notice the shelves and all of the materials are right up front and close and personal. Um, Our staff and our designers put a lot of thought into where the collections were going to go. So large print is now towards the front of the building. So that, you know, if you uh, have mobility issues and you're looking for large print, then that is something that it's gonna be much easier for you to find there. And the the wayfinding is gonna be much easier (laughs) to uh, see and uh, a lot clearer for people to be able to use. This this sounds like you've incorporated a lot of the things that the people in the community really wanted you to do. I know the windows, I said, give us more light, give us more light. And that's why when I saw a picture, I said, wait a minute, that is the more light they're talking about. Yeah, and I think that was one of the most exciting things. And, And one of the things that the foundation made happen was those extra windows um, on the west side of the building. Uh, and, you know, the, the Hecker Architects has talked a lot to us about, you know, when the library was designed in the 70s, uh, libraries were considered kind of introverted spaces, you know, kind of inward facing and all of the activity on the inside. So, um, you know, and that lent itself fairly well to the brutalism style <laughs> of the building. Um, but now libraries are more extroverted. They're more connected to the outside um, environment. And so they wanted to incorporate those elements of uh, being able to connect to the outside um, and pushed a lot of the reading nooks and the sort of where people would be staying in the library, like as a, you know, I'm gonna sit for a while and read all of those kinds of things to the exterior, to the to the walls with the windows and things like that. So um, that's been really exciting too, yeah. What about technology? Because I also, there wasn't any internet in the 70s and <laughs> much of the 80s. So big changes, what's going right. on there? Um, so we, one of my goals for the project was power and data everywhere, um, trying to get uh, the building to be as flexi- flexible and adaptable of a space as we possibly could. And that was actually one of our values for the project. It had its own kind of set of values and flexibility and adaptability fit right in there. Um, and so uh, we've moved the computer lab up to the um, first floor, um, kind of that main floor. You'll see it pretty soon right after you walk in. Um, And so we can help people more easily there and it's less in a sort of dark corner of the library. It's more in that well-lit, beautiful space, um, hopefully inspiring space. 
and uh, you know we'll have more Wi-Fi access points. Uh, the technology uh, wasn't necessarily a part of the bond, but we were able to fund um, upgrades for the meeting rooms, new screens, new projectors, new uh, connections and connectivity and all of those kinds of things. Um, so that has been really great that we've been able to do that. And the other thing that we got um, as a, not with the project, but simultaneously to the project is uh, we got what is called an automated materials handler. What do you think that people have been asking for that this, what you're talking about is going to address? Right, so I think um, one of the things we've heard a lot about is just the general technology and how people would like more of it. But I think with this, it's going to be a much faster turnaround for materials. Um, so not only will they be taken off uh, accounts earlier, sooner, but then they can be turned around and reprocessed for the next patron more quickly as well. A lot of people go to the library to do genealogical study and uh, look into their family histories. And I understand that all of that will be back and uh, accessible again. But what about Salem's own history? What are you doing to assist with that? So the, it's, a, it's not actually us, it's the Willamette Heritage Center has uh, taken a initiative that the library did uh, grant funded in the late 90s, early 2000s. And they are, it's a, the Salem History website and they are going to update it and make it more web friendly and uh, pub publicly host it so that uh, anyone can use it for research, but we'll also have a link to it from our website. It was getting out of date, wasn't it? it? It was very much getting out of date and it wasn't something that we had the internal capacity to really spend a lot of time and effort and energy on. So we're really glad that the Willamette Heritage Center has decided that um, they can take this on and can uh, bring it up to where it needs to be uh, for the future. Talk about the children's library. <laughs> yeah, so we had a um, we had a little poll to name the children's space. So it's going to be the children's corner, and this is another thing that we were able to do is actually turn the top floor, which is the second floor, is now all youth services. So we took the teen space that was in the uh, plaza level and moved that up to the second floor. So now it starts at zero and goes through 18 on that top floor. Um, the teen space is so fun. Um, and I think, and the teen advisory board has been involved in creating it. They met with the architects to talk about what they wanted to see in the teen space. They were very insistent that there be a blackboard chalkboard wall. Um, so that exists in the new space. Um, that was something that they wanted to recreate from the previous space. But, you know, they just, they had a lot of great suggestions and a lot of things that they wanted to see that we really tried to incorporate in that space, um, in the look, the feel, and the way that you can use it. Um, the story time area is, uh, is still where it was, and it's still about the same size as it was, but it has now a better flooring for um, more messy crafts, all of the glitter <laughs> um, and glue and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's been really um, fun and awesome too, is to see kind of the transformation transformation of the children's area. And there will be some things coming back that people love. The dollhouse actually got a renovation as well. Um, so the dollhouse is on its way back. Um, and uh, the Kristen Coons, uh, the, the trees that were sort of the gateways into the children's space, uh, those were sh those were protected in place during the project, and she's actually been working on getting them all back together in the way that they looked before we shut down. In the design, you know, the carpet to the color palettes, all of that is is meant to tie into the idea that the entire library is a sort of living tree and this, you know, breathing living organism. So. Uh, it's really, it's really cool and you, and it's really amazing to see it kind of play out in all of the different ways um, as you walk through. Give us your website so people can get in touch. It's cityofsalem.net forward slash library. Well, that's easy enough. Yeah. Cityofsalem.net forward slash library. Yes. <laughs> thank you for joining us today on Insight. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you for joining us today on Insight. I'm Wendy Brokaw.